We'll go to this brother here. Assalamu alaikum. Um, Wa alaikum salam. Thank you very much for your speech. Again, it was good. Um, in your other speeches of Christ and Islam, you've given us examples how we Muslims follow the example of Christ. I found another one which I haven't heard you say before. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 29, it says, If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members shall perish than for your whole body to cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. I'm asking if, why are the Christians attacking us for cutting the hand when Jesus is telling them to do that? Thank you. You see, my brother, my son, the Christians don't really believe that the Bible is the word of God. Everything is there for, for, for adornment, for, you know, for mystification. The things that Jesus said, no Christian is prepared to do that. Beautifully put, what you are saying now, this is what Jesus said, that if, if you offend one of these little ones in any way, you abuse them in any way, that person should be put to death. And we find there are, at the present moment, there are court cases going on in America for priests abusing choir boys. Sins of the fathers. Case after case of alleged misconduct. In 2002, revelations reached a crescendo. Sparked by the release of thousands of pages of documents. The nine-year-old father, Gilbert Gothe, has admitted that he sexually abused at least 35 boys. There are claims to the tune of $500 million. The Catholic Church is facing scandals and being forced to pay millions of dollars. And by the turn of this century, it'll go to $1 billion claims for sexualizing choir boys. To date, abuse cases have cost the church and its insurers over three billion dollars in the churches the cases now I got I got cutting I didn't know I would have brought it along I show you so they don't really believe they don't really believe in these things Jesus truly said if the eye offends you cast it out if this eye is gonna make you to go to hell he's telling you do not look upon a woman to lust after her whosoever Look at upon a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. You're already guilty. You, my disciples, you are on a higher level than the Jews. The Jew was guilty only if he committed adultery. And that punishment was stoning to death, according to the Old Testament, the law of God. And Jesus didn't come to change the law. Because in Matthew, again, I think chapter 5, verse 17, he says, Think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments or shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall teach and do shall be called great. Where are the Christians who follow the laws and the commandments? Universally, they reject the laws and the commandments. The, Christ, the Christian says he's not bound by the law. He says he's living under grace. He is living under grace. They are not bound by the law. Because he said, if you keep, according to Jesus, you are worthless rubbish. Even if you break one of these least commandments, you are not his follower. You are not his follower. He says, he's not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. The way I pray, you pray. The way I'm circumcised, you must be circumcised. The, day I, the way I eschew the flesh of the swine, you do the same. No, 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 you don't want to follow him. We Muslims, we are the true Christians. In that we are following Jesus Christ. No, but now, when we say that, the Christians say we are attacking them. We are attacking them. I say, I'm only presenting to you 
the case is in daylight. It's a daylight. It's an open secret. What's going on? In the churches, what's going on? The priests, what are they doing? The Anglican Church has just written a new Ten Commandments. Do you know that? A new Ten Commandments? No, the new Ten Commandments for vicars. Vicars. Vicars means priests. How they must behave when the parishioners come along for solace and advice. I'm reading them to you. I'm reading to you. I wish I had brought it along. He's in my hotel room now. Hmm? A new Ten Commandments. He says, you must not entertain young woman late at night. Number one. <laughs> no, no, that's number one. You do not entertain or allow the, your parishioner to come and see you, young woman, late at night. That's number one. First commandment. So I'm asking, what do you mean by young woman? What do you mean by young? How young is young? Huh? The woman of 50, is she old? The woman of 60, is she old? What do you take me for? I'm 78. You think I'm old? No, no, no. <laughs> no, honestly speaking, honestly speaking, I'm 78, my wife is 75. And I tell you, we are not old. <laughs> I tell my wife, I tell my wife jokingly, I tell my wife jokingly, I said, look, you are old, I'm also old. You know? But, you see, let me get some, somebody young, meaning, get another wife. I said, let me get somebody young to help you. She, say, she says, I'll kill her. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. I said, look, it's not her fault. I will bring her to help you. She said, I'll kill her. I said, why kill her? If anybody has to be killed, it's me. You know, I'm bringing her. She says, no, I'll kill her. So, I said, I can't afford a murder in the house, so I'm satisfied. But now... <laughs> how young is young? You are as young as you feel. You are as young as you think, you are as young as you feel. <laughs> and late at night, I said, what do you mean late at night? How late is late? You think you can't do wrong things five o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> huh? Damn it all, you have to wait till midnight? Huh? You are a priest, and this poor woman, and he says, now how you sit, you must behave. You must sit. You know, when the woman comes to you for solace, you don't sit, you know, with your legs stretched out on the sofa. And <laughs> no, no, you must sit with all due respect. And the lighting must be correct. The lighting must be right. <laughs> New Ten Commandments. New Ten Commandments. After 2,000 years of Christianity, today you have to learn how to behave with women who are not your wives and daughters. <laughs> when my African people in South Africa Every tribe, Zulu, Tosa, Chwana, every African tribe south of the Zambezi, they have what they call Shonipa, respect for women. They don't intermingle in the primitive society. As Christians, of course, they have the Bible in the hand and they take everybody's wives and daughters to the dance, as Christians. <laughs> but this, this primitive African, he has respect for women. What he knows, before the white man came, he had it and he still got it. Today, after 2,000 years, you have to be given new Ten Commandments, how to behave with women in a, of your church. Now, this is what it is. You are not reading your Bible. What the Bible says, don't offend the, one of these little ones. You, this, it's better for you that they put a millstone around your neck and drown you. Millstone, kill them. Kill them.